Hey, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Grief Drums, and welcome back to another episode of Top 3 Tips. Today's video, we're going to do things a little bit differently, but for the most part, it's going to look fairly familiar to you. But we'll get to more of that later on. So each week, I try to come to you with three new tips from around the Siege community in the hope of helping you improve. And if you don't already know, I live stream over on Twitch three days a week on Thursdays, Fridays and Sundays, where you can come and hang out and we try and do all of these things live. Normally fail pretty epically, but we have a bit of a laugh doing it nevertheless. Alternatively, you can check me out over on Twitter and keep up to date with everything that's going on. But without any further ado, let's just go ahead and jump straight into this week's video. Oh, they're all sight. Down. I've just been tracked. Jackal. Oh, okay, dude. Oh. One sec. Oh, okay, dude. Oh, okay, I'm out. Right, that's it. That's it. I've had enough. So you got hit on there. there. And then... Reloading! Oh! Let's get one shot headshotted from Narnia by an iron side Ella player. Okay, so let's be real here. He is one of the best players in the game. I got pretty lucky. He wasn't really trying. We're playing a casual on the test server. I'm not going to even begin to try and state that I outplay Pengu there. However, what I want to look at today is I want to look at the recoil control on Ella. I've spoken to so many people and they have said, I, I don't know how you use that weapon. The recoil is horrendous on it. And yes, it is kind of bad. In fact, it's pretty terrible in the second half of the magazine. So we're going to break down exactly how I use Ella because I think I do pretty well with her. I'm currently riding on a 1.8 KD for this season. Um, and I've used her a lot. I've used her a hell of a lot. It's not like I've just played five games and I've got a really nice KD from those, you know, small amount of games. So... Let's take a look at how I use Ella so that hopefully you can use her in a similar sort of way. So back when Ella first released, her Scorpion was insane. The recoil was like a laser. It was just the stuff of nightmares for anyone that went up against it. Following that, the devs decided to make it so that the recoil was pretty uncontrollable and it really sort of did nerf the weapon. It wasn't until around about the time of the SI Stadium game mode releasing that they sort of really revisited it and adjusted it so that the first 16 rounds that come out of the weapon were really accurate and then the recoil started to become uncontrollable. It was during this mode that a lot of people heavily criticized this. They didn't like it. They felt that she was too strong again and the devs instantly lowered the 16 rounds to 11 rounds. So what that means is the first 11 rounds to come out of the weapon are really accurate and then the recoil starts to just go a bit mad. Now with most weapons, the recoil on a weapon will go like up and left, for example. So it's very, very easy to counteract that by pulling down and right with the mouse or with your analog stick. Analog stick, Jesus, that makes me sound old. Thumbstick, we'll go with thumbstick. <laughs> I don't play console anymore, all right? So with the first 11 rounds being accurate and then the horizontal recoil kicking in and really sort of bouncing the weapon left and right, I found that the best way to utilize this weapon is to treat it more like the SMG 11 short bursts you don't have to hold the trigger down for an extended period of time if you do that your target becomes difficult to you know remain on top of and quite frankly the recoil just becomes dark so short bursts up to about the first 11 rounds and then stopping shooting reacquiring the target if necessary and starting to shoot again is something that i found to be really really effective the other thing about ella that you really have to pay attention to is the ability to size up gunfights now you don't want to take long range gunfights with this weapon you really don't the scorpion is designed for close to mid-range gunfights the majority of fights inside of the building you're going to be using the scorpion but if you're trying to take someone out across the map that's where the pistol comes in so handy the rg15 having a red dot on top of it or green dot in this case i suppose um, can make it so that you are far more accurate over range and you can really sort of land those headshots. Ella is definitely at her strongest though when she plays around her mines. By placing the mine on an entry point, waiting for it to go off and then jumping out around the corner to take that mid-range gunfight or that close-range gunfight, the fire rate of the weapon does the majority of the work for you. So go around the corner. If you're using an angle grip, you can quickly acquire the target, give a short burst of rounds towards their face and I guarantee you the fire rate will do the rest of the work for you. 
Now at the beginning of the video, I said that things were going to work a little bit differently today. And what I meant by that was this. A few months back, I posted this on my community tab of YouTube saying if I was to make new videos covering tips and tricks, what would you want to see? And as a result of that, I got loads of great answers of things that people wanted me to look at and wanted me to break down. Some were really good. Some were, you know, beginner things. Some were quite advanced. So let's go ahead and over the next few weeks, start breaking some of these down. If you've got any that you would like to see in future videos, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Put your suggestions for what you want me to cover and I will maybe go ahead and take a look at doing it. So the first one we got was this, how to know when to aim standing level or crouch level. So when it comes to differentiating between aiming at standing height and crouching height, um, I'm going to make this extremely simple. Always aim at standing height unless you know for a fact that someone is at crouch height. So say, for example, you've just thrown someone out and you know they're crouching like this guy right here. It's pointless aiming at standing height, knowing that he's crouching because I would be missing him, wouldn't I? So this is the only time you ever really want to aim at crouch height. The rest of the time, you want to be aiming at standing height. And the logic behind this is it's much easier to pull down on the mouse than it is to go up on the mouse and control the recoil at the same time. If you're using a thumbstick, it's the same sort of logic. If you're having to pull down for the recoil, you're already going in that direction. Whereas if you're going up to then have to come back down, it's a split second extra difference in which you're probably going to die. By aiming at standing height, if someone is crouching, then you can adjust to them much easily, uh, much more easily. God, I can't speak. It takes a little bit of practice, but like this dude, he was crouching there. Now, if I'm aiming at standing height and then pull down to the crouch, it's really, really simple to do. And it's a habit you kind of have to force yourself to get into. Having this little dot on the screen can be extremely beneficial. If I just go into the options and go ahead and turn this off, uh, if I can find it, interface preferences, show pin crosshair in character and in observation tools. So on a drone, it's obviously extremely handy to have that on. Now, by having it on on the character, you can already see exactly where you're aiming for the entirety of moving around if you're not ads And in the past, with games like CSGO and stuff like that, way, way back in the day, people actually made tiny little dots on their screen with a tiny pen or a tiny little bit of black tape or something like that so that they knew they were aiming at exactly the right place. Terrorist hunt can be really bad for this. It can sort of force you into bad habits where you walk around aiming at crouch level because the majority of the terrorists on this actually are crouching. But practice aiming at head height, practice aiming at standing level, and then as and when you see someone, you're already ready for it. So with the final question relating to smokes, toxic babes, uh, I know it said grenades as well, but I think this is going to be a pertinent point to cover for, for the rest of this particular uh tips video let me go ahead and just close this we don't need that um i wanted to talk about smokes toxic babes and the way they utilize the way that you can use them now i have covered this in the past but um i think it's important to know so for the longest time the devs have attempted to make it so that the smoke doesn't clip through the walls and sadly it's just not really been achievable but the way that you place one of the toxic canisters makes a big difference so as you can see this hallway out here you've got long and you've got pipes or short these are fairly common thoroughfares especially into this area moto or memorial room and people may you know hunker in in this section just here when they're trying to attack before they swing and wide peak now a really easy way to sort of get people in there is to place the toxic canister down flat on the floor and then set it off and by doing so, the smoke actually goes through the wall. And as you can see, we're hitting quite a large area here. It's an easy way to knock off some pretty cheap points, basically, of health from the enemy. Now, what I was saying is by placing it down on the floor like this, the way that the smoke comes out of it is sort of up like this in like a dome section. None of it goes down. So with that in mind, if you were to place this on the wall, it's going to go out from the top of it 
in a dome section. So it's going to go out into the corridor over there. It's going to come out over this way, but it's not going to go behind the smoke canister. So if I go back into Moto and now I set it off, you'll notice that none of it comes through into here and all of it has gone out forwards of the smoke canister. So the way that you place these is extremely important. If you're trying to cover the corridor just on the other side of this on long, if you go ahead and throw it down on the wall, it's not going to do anything because the back of the canister is to long on the other side of this wall. If, however, you go ahead and throw it down on the floor and then set it off, you can limit or at least slow the push in these areas. By doing so, you're not exposing yourself to the enemy. You're not showing where you are. Um, you're quite literally f playing from the safety of the back of church, throwing the canister down and delaying their push, cutting off the long lines of sight and the visibility and allowing your team to play around it. The possibilities for this are pretty endless. You can use it in all sorts of places on all sorts of different maps. And whilst I'm not going to sit down and break down every single spot that you could use them, you're only limited by your creativity. If you go around and look at the common places that attackers are going to go to, you can look at other ways to use the toxic babes without exposing your own body, without getting into the line of fire. You're quite literally just placing these on the other side of a defendable wall and still causing an issue for the attackers that are trying to push under a limited amount of time. I'm afraid that's going to be it for today's video. Hopefully there's something in there that you can take away. As I said earlier, if you've got any questions or things that you want to see covered in tips and tricks videos, put them down in the comments below. And if it's any good, I'll maybe take a look at covering it. Anyway, if you did enjoy the video, please consider hitting that thumbs up. If you don't already, make sure to subscribe. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, stay reckless and relentless.